many compromises were necessary in order to produce the Constitution. This included making federal law have more power than the states do. The Senate was created to balance the power between small and large states. This was because each state needed to be represented equally. The government also needed a source of balancing. This came through the three different branches, the legislative, the judicial, and the executive. Each of the branches served their own purposes. The person who was overseeing all this was James Madison, who is the father of our Constitution. George Washington played his role by being one of the first people to recognize the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation and position for something new. James Madison was a great man. He was one of our founding fathers and served a big role in the new nation. Two important things played roles in the drafting of the Bill of Rights. These are the Declaration of Rights written by George Mason. They spoke on the basic human rights that people should have. Then there is the Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom written by Thomas Jefferson. This outlawed the established church. The established church is the government supported for one favorite church. Eventually, James Madison took many ideas from both of these and drafted the Bill of Rights. Go. Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> there were two groups that came about that either did or didn't support the ratification of the Constitution. These two groups were the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. Federalists wanted a strong central government in order to promote economic development and public improvement. Anti-Federalists opposed a strong central government that would weaken the states. The leading Virginia proponents of ratification were George Washington, James Madison, and the opponents were Patrick Henry and George Mason. Federalists believed in a strong federal government that would have more power than the states. The Federalists believed in stronger state governments with more power to establish their own rules. George Washington and James Madison were both for the Constitution because they both thought that a strong federal government was necessary for the success of the United States. On the other hand, Patrick Henry and George Mason were both against the Constitution and believed that a strong federal government might evolve in... <laughs> John Marshall was the Chief Justice of the United States. He had to make many court decisions in many different cases. He served an important role in the new nation by establishing the Supreme Court as an independent and equal branch of the national government. In Marbury v. Madison, the concept of judicial review was established. This allowed for certain laws to be considered unconstitutional. In McCulloch v. Maryland, the doctrine of implied powers was made that talked about the powers authorized by the Constitution. <laughs> Lastly, in Gibbons vs. Ogden, it gave the Supreme Court of the United States the power to regulate interstate commerce. Federalists and Anti-Federalists got into lots of fights <laughs> over their beliefs. This is because one group believed in a strong federal government, while the other believed in a strong state government. This is because the state government was better for the people who wanted to rule themselves and didn't want to have a developing monarchy rule over no. them. I think that law is unconstitutional. 
<laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> That's why we. <laughs> Judicial review. President during the Constitutional Convention was George Washington. The Missouri Compromise made slaves count as three fifths of a person for each vote. Hello, what year is it? Good day, mate. It's 1781. Oh, when the Alters of Confederation was adopted. Hey! Thank you. Just go. Here are some of our questions. What provided for a weak national government? When was the Articles of Confederation adopted? How many votes did the Articles of Confederation give each state? Who was known as the father of the Constitution? The Senate helped to balance the power between what? How many votes did a slave count as according to the Missouri Compromise? How many branches of government were established by the Constitution? What are the names of the different branches of government? Checks and balances did what? Who was president during the Constitutional Convention?